What's going on world? AJ here and today on the show we are going to be just simply just giving some updates of what's going on in my corner of the world and we're going to talk about the world of IT. That's right. This pertains to what's currently going on in my corner of the world. So as always get yourself a beverage, sit back, relax, and let's talk about what's happening. Delicious. So about a week or so ago, we got some news with uh, my current employer that they are doing a restructure uh, within the leadership side of the stuff, which I fall under that category. So with the restructure coming in, my position is currently being taken away, meaning that I'm going to have to reapply for a new position, which they are restructuring. So they're doing either a coordinator, which pretty much is a supervisor, uh, they're doing a float position, which basically is where you can travel and fill in for when staff are out, do some extra task or whatever. Uh, and then there's a trainer position, which that will also result into probably traveling to all over the state, uh, training, doing training seminars and stuff like that. Don't know what that all is going to entail. So that's what we're kind of looking at right now. So it made me sit down and really think about, you know, a career change. And so I have always been a fan of computers, love computers. And so I've got a couple of months left <laughs> until the changes could take into effect. But diving into the area that I like, the world of IT, the world of computers, ever since I was a kid, I always loved this stuff, love the technology, love computers. And rarely in the 90s did I get the opportunity to use a computer because it was always in school. It was in classrooms. and. I always signed up for computer classes and took those classes and I took as many as I could. I've done like uh, computer applications, I've done desktop publishing, I've done uh, multimedia where you build PowerPoints, websites, stuff like that, all sorts of things. Uh, I took an electronics course at, at the Career Center that's partnered with uh, the high school I was at and we learned Cisco networking, we learned to build computers, we learned to you know, repair circuit boards, all sorts of crazy stuff in there. And that was a lot of fun. Always enjoy that side of stuff and learning how to put them together, problem solve and all that stuff. So I've got the knowledge down. I just don't have the certifications. And of course, in today's world, technology is always constantly changing. You got to stay up to it. You got to constantly study stuff. And I haven't really kept up with it as much as I should have over the years. And, you know, never went for that degree either. So, you know, eventually my parents, we, they got a computer about two, in the year 2000, you know, we finally had a home computer and uh, it was better late than ever. Y'all remember Windows 98, that's what it operated on. Y'all remember dial up internet? Man, that took five hours to download a song or a video uh, for your computer. We lived out in the boonies. That's right, out in the boonies. I apologize actually, no, no, I shouldn't say that. We live down the country is what my mom always said. So I apologize, mom, for saying that we live down in the boonies. But let me offend you one more time here because my mom is notorious, notorious for breaking computers. And by golly, guess who always had to fix it? It was either me or she would call her little brother Rick who built the computer for us and put it together. So he had the ins and outs of it. So shout out to you, Uncle Rick, for saving the day at times. I need to come down and see you sometime. It's been a while. So after my senior year, I had plans of going to the local community college, which was strictly a computer campus. It was a spinoff campus from the one that was about an hour away in the near the town. But unfortunately, they decided to close down and end that campus by that fall year. So my plans of going there was out the window. So I decided to just take a year off and just work at the local McDonald's for about the, about the next year and just, you know, kind of pursue other things at the time. And we kind of think about what I was going to do next. But a couple of years passed and, you know, I got tired of the fast food game. I started taking interest going back into looking at college again. 
at another place in town and also looking for another job at the same time, you know? And so I got as far as the tour of, of the campus, talked with them and such, and never really finished out the whole process. I kind of just stepped out because I ended up landing a job with the state. And I, the only reason why I landed with the job with the state is because I knew somebody on the inside. That's how you get into the state. You know somebody from the inside. I don't understand why it's like that. It's weird. Actually, a lot of companies, sometimes that's all it takes is networking. You know somebody from within the walls of a place that you're trying to get in and they put in a good word for you or recommend you or something. And that's how you get in any really any place anymore. So network like crazy. That's my recommendation. You network like crazy. You meet people, you get to know them and go from there. So I abandoned the college pursuit. I, I decided to leave it mainly because, you know, at the time, because if I was going to pursue it, I would have to take evening classes and I was still serving, you know, I was serving at the time at my local church on Wednesdays at their, at their youth group. So I was like, eh, it's going to take away, take me out of that. I like, I don't want to do that because I was also a credential minister, currently ordained, of course, serving as an associate pastor at our local church here in town called Real Life Church. Of course, years pass, you get married. You have a child on the way, and then that state job that you was at, you lose it. It's gone. Poof. Out of nowhere. Blindsided. It happens. It can happen to anybody. You know, you, you can lose your job at any time. So after two months of being unemployed and trying to search work, I decided to bite the bullet and go work for McDonald's again for the next few weeks or so until I got on with a local retail empire, a big old blue box superstore that has a spark for a logo. You all know who that is, so why do I even need to say the name? You know what company I'm talking about, y'all. And the craziest thing about working in retail sales, you gain a lot, and I mean a lot of experiences. There's a lot of things you can learn just simply working at retail sales. And if you try out for different positions in that, like a department manager or a supervisor, and you just begin to learn all sorts of different skills and trades that you just pick up working at a retail store. It's just remarkable the skills you gain. And it was the place that really, really got me to come out of my shell and be able to be more of a people person and learn how to be an extrovert because by nature, I'm an introvert. Always have been, always will be, but I now know how to navigate those. I know how to navigate those areas of my life. So it really has helped me in that area to just branch out more. But after five years or so working there, you know, I decided it's time to get out. I was getting burnt out there. It was getting difficult with management and such, and you just need to change. So that's where it comes into where I'm at today with my current employer. So the long story is my pursuit of going into computer world and looking at going to college I took off one year and I was like, I'll just take one year off and then go turn into 18 plus years. That's right. <laughs> That's what happens. You, you just go on this long journey of not making it to school and you just truck along through life and just let life happen. So I decided again this last week, of course, and it's been in the back of my mind the last few years, actually to dabble into looking into schooling again for it, to look into how I can go about getting my foot into the IT world field as a career and make more than what I am now. And so with all the financial hits as, as of recent, because you saw my home repairs video, we've had a lot of financial turmoil. It's going to be costly. It's going to be very costly. So. I just keep doing some more research. I, I chatted with a, a university this past week on the phone, just getting, getting some feelers and an idea of what I'm looking at. I'm looking online for websites and see if there's other alternatives. And there is, there's a lot more cheaper alternatives that are out there uh, for that field. And also what's probably the other best option is the School of YouTube. YouTube has a lot of great resources and I've been dabbling into YouTube a lot within this past couple weeks, just studying and watching videos on 
IT work on different types of computer programming and all that stuff. And I'm just now I'm down in this rabbit hole and I have visited places and downloaded things to my computer and trying things out and experimenting on things. And it's been great. It's been wonderful. I recently experimented with VirtualBox and built a Ubuntu Linux operating system. It worked fine for a bit, but right now it's completely utter trash at the moment because I don't know what happened. But that's the beauty of VirtualBox. It is a, it is basically a virtual computer inside of your computer. But you can experiment. You can break stuff. You can try things out. You can do whatever in a virtual box within your system. It's just crazy what you can do. I also started learning the command prompt screen. I started researching out, watching a couple of videos and learning all these different command prompt codings and such that I'm seeing scrolling through the screen. And I'm like, wow, this is fascinating stuff. This is incredible. I also recently learned how to remote access into another computer from another computer. That's right, even with my phone. How do I do it? Well, Google Chrome actually has a remote app that you can use because I don't have a pro version of Windows I can't really use the Windows version because it's just the basic Windows 11 operating system that's not pro or business. So I don't really have access to the remote side on that, unless there's a way I could bypass it. More research on that later. But I now have remote access using Google Chrome, of course. I don't like Google Chrome, but it's on here. I use Microsoft Edge more than anything else. I used to use Chrome a lot actually, but I don't know, Chrome got weird at some points and it was giving me issues, but it looks like now they've done some updates since I last used it and it looks good now. So kudos to you, Google Chrome for improving yourself. But anyways, they have this app that you can just remote access from one computer to another, which you can do that on your phone. So I can control this laptop using my iPhone, mind blown right there, crazy. Why would I ever need to do that? Because I can, because I can. That's why, it's just cool, that's all. So what is it that I know about computers when it comes to the IT world? I can put them together, I can set up a home network, I can figure out why your printer is not working or how to, I don't know, install a printer on your computer. God knows how many times I've done that at the office for the last three years of people not knowing how to set up a printer on their laptop or computer or fixing a paper jam or figuring out what these arrow codes mean, you know, I'm the ones fixing their stuff. They don't have to call IT, I can fix it. Because there are some things that IT, things are locked behind IT's wall that I can't get to. And I'll let them do that because that's their pay grade. But there's like the basic things that like, I don't know, plugging in a mouse because sometimes there's actually people who don't know how to use a wireless mouse or keyboard and can't figure out why it's not working. There's people out there like that. And there's people like me who comes in, let me show you how it's done. And they're like, we're grateful that you're here in this office. You're welcome, by the way, because you don't have to waste your time putting in the ticket to IT and waiting probably a few days for them to call you back. But I can figure out how to set up multiple monitors because again, there's people at the office who just struggle with that area because why is my mouse not going to this screen? Well, let me help you set that up for you. And I walk them through it and they are like mind blown. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know that even exists. Hey, you want to install your uh, EHR system that's web-based as an app? You can install any website on Microsoft Edge as an app on your computer. Mind blown. I blew people's minds right there recently with that stuff. They didn't know that even existed. It's stuff like that. It's the little things that I research, that I study, that I play around with and experiment with that you pick up and you learn. And a lot of it's just easy stuff. A lot of it is just things that are just right there in front of you that they just don't know. And that's where I come into play. That's where I like, what does this thing do? What does this button do kind of thing scenario. I've even helped our own IT guys diagnose things that are wrong. I recently fixed a telehealth setup because the iPad that's connected to it wasn't functioning for whatever reason. And 
with IT's help, of course, walking me through a couple things, giving me a couple ideas, boom, I fixed it. I fixed it. It was great because they were at another location. I was there. Sometimes you may not know how to fix it. That's where the experts come in too. Somebody else from IT will tell you, hey, just do this, this, and this. Walk me through it. I got it fixed. It's amazing. And technology over the years, like I said, back in 2004, when I did all those training stuff, everything's changed since then. A lot of things have changed since then when it comes to technology. You know, website building has become more simplistic. You know, it's more of a drag and drop feature. Wix.com is incredible for website building. It's just easy to use for anybody. If you know how to drag and drop things and position things, you're golden. You're golden when it comes to that stuff. But I remember back in eighth grade, I took this uh, computer class and it was building websites using HTML coding. Coding! I was already coding in eighth grade. And we had these brand new, and this is again, this is back in 1999 and 2000, brand new iMac computers. You know, the bulky monitor ones that are all multicolored that I, that Apple made, everybody was trying to get in on those computers. I'm talking about teachers, all right? I'm talking about teachers right there. Because we had a computer lab specifically called the iMac lab and every teacher wanted to bring their class into that thing, all right? Because they're like, oh, look at these awesome computers. But I was thankfully got into a class where we learned about how to build and develop websites. And we did the old HTML coding all that fun stuff to learn how to build a website from scratch. It was a great time there. But I'm done rambling. This video's gone long enough. But I just want to talk about the world of IT and why I still continue to learn computers. Why I'm looking into jumping into a new career eventually. Once I look at figuring out what I'm going to do, you know, for training and such. For courses or whatnot. So, I mean, eventually I'm going to end up going and taking some courses. Eventually, I'm going to get some certifications down the road. I'm, I'm going to look into doing that. That's that's a goal I have now. I've just set that as my goal is to pursue that area. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know what it's going to take to get there. But I've got some resources. I've got some people. I got a guy in our IT department at our workplace that I know and love because he's the man. And I'm going to pick his brain eventually to figure out some ideas and such. But if you have any ideas, you can freely comment down below in this video. If you have any ideas or recommendations when it comes to the world of IT, if that's something you've experienced in yourself or have taken courses before, any recommendations would be wonderful suggestions or such. But anyways, this has gone on long enough. I know this is a long story, but this is a field I enjoy computers, video editing, making graphics, you know, all the works, stuff that I still continue to do as a hobby on the side, not to mention, you know, I do this for our church and, you know, stuff that I've set up at the house. I've got all sorts of skills, all sorts of stuff. But if you're looking for a career change, I know in me, I'm in my late 30s. Getting closer to 40 every day. <laughs> and you're looking for a career change, it's not too late. It's not too late for you. All you have to do is just jump in and just go for it. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there. Go learn something new and take care.